Hi everyone, Ramesh here. In this video, we are going to discuss how Spring MUC framework works or how the HTTP request is being processed in Spring MUC web applications. This is one of the frequently asked interview question on Spring MUC framework in interviews. And uh, in this video, we are going to quickly discuss how Spring MUC framework works and how the HTTP request is being processed from start to end in typical Spring MUC applications. Let me quickly discuss some of the web fundamentals. We typically deploy our web applications in web containers such as Tomcat or Jetty server, right? And whenever we hit a URL of that particular application in a browser, then the request comes to the web container like Tomcat server and Tomcat server will look for web.xml file of that particular project. And Tomcat server will find servlet or filters which are mapped to that, that particular URL and Tomcat server will delegate that serve letter filter to process the request. Remember web container like Tomcat is responsible for creating serve letter and filter instances and invoking their various lifecycle methods like init, service and destroy. In case of HTTP request, HTTP serve letter handles the request. For example, doget method will handle or process HTTP GET request and do POST method will process HTTP POST method. So this is these are the few fundamentals before jumping to understanding Spring MUC framework, uh, you know, uh, architecture. As probably uh, you know that dispatcher servlet acts as a front controller, like it provides a single entry point for all the client requests to the Spring MUC web application and forwards request to Spring MUC controllers for processing okay a dispatcher servlet is sometimes called spring muc framework servlet okay and dispatcher servlet is actually a servlet it inherits from http servlet base class and it has all the servlet lifecycle methods typically we configure dispatcher servlet in web.xml like uh, we configure servlets in web.xml right so similarly dispatcher servlet uh, we configure in a web.xml that is called a deployment descriptor so spring mvc provides different ways to configure dispatcher servlet like we can configure dispatcher servlet either in web.xml or we can use a java based configuration to register a dispatcher servlet uh, using a java code okay so just remember dispatcher servlet is responsible for pre-processing and post-processing the request okay and all the uh, you know uh, incoming request post come to the dispatcher servlet and dispatcher servlet will uh, you know forward that request to the spring mvc controllers for processing all right let's understand step by step how spring mvc framework works whenever we hit a url in a browser a request first come to the dispatcher servlet for example this is the url let us say if we hit a URL, this URL in a browser, then request first comes to the dispatcher servlet. This is the first step. And in our application, let us say we have a lot of controllers like uh, we may have employee controller, customer controller, home controller, login, user controller. Dispatcher servlet don't know which controller will uh, need to process the request. So basically dispatcher servlet will ask a handler mapper to identify which controller is responsible to handle this request. Okay, so this is the second step. Handler mapper will basically identify which controller is responsible to process this particular request. For example, we have a customers, right? So this is the URL and it will go to the customer controller and uh, it will uh, look into the handler mapper or the method which are, which is annotated with at the rate request mapping annotation with this URL okay so once handler mapper will map this request to this particular handler mapper then handler mapper will return the particular controller details to the dispatcher servlet okay now the dispatcher servlet knows which controller is responsible to handle the request okay so this is the third step so once dispatcher servlet knows which controller is responsible for processing this request then dispatcher servlet will send that request to the corresponding controller 
Now in our case, customer controller is the controller which is responsible to process this particular request. Okay, this is the fourth step. Now controller will basically uh, responsible to process this request and it will create a model data and it will uh, create it will just return a view and model to the dispatcher satellite okay let us say if we want to get a list of customers from the database then controller will responsible to get a list of customers from the database and it will uh, you know store the customers data into a model and controller will return a model and view to the dispatcher servlet so this is the fifth step now dispatcher servlet has a model and view right and dispatcher servlet don't know which view it should map then dispatcher servlet will consult a view resolver all right so this is the sixth step so view resolver will basically uh, you know identify the location of actual uh, view page let us say if we are using JSP then view resolver by, uh, will basically identify where the JSP pages are located in our project by default internal resource view resolver is configured for JSP pages there are also different resolvers are uh, available in Spring MVC framework okay now view resolver will find a location of the pages view pages and the extension and then that details will be again returned to the dispatcher servlet this is the seventh step and dispatcher servlet now send view and actual content of view and model to the view component view component will merge model and view and it will return a plain html page to the dispatcher servlet and dispatcher servlet finally send that html page or response to the browser for rendering so this is the typical flow in spring muc application all right so this is how the http request will process in spring muc framework or spring muc application so all the requests first come to the dispatcher servlet dispatcher servlet will consult handler mapper to identify a controller which which can process the request handler mapper will you know identify the controller and it will send the controller details back to the dispatcher servlet dispatcher servlet will again send that request to the controller controller will basically uh, you know create a model and uh, it returns a model and view to this dispatcher servlet dispatcher servlet again uh, takes a help from view, view resolver to resolve a particular location of the view and then dispatcher servlet will finally send a view and model to the view component view component will merge view and model and it will produce an html page and that html response or page will be again sent back to the browser for rendering so this is the typical http request flow in a spring muc architecture i have created a sample spring muc project to demonstrate how the http request is you know processed in spring muc project so let me quickly show you how the http request is processed in uh, you know web application now let's quickly see spring mvc architecture flow in an action so this is a spring mvc tutorial uh, repository github repository it has a lot of spring mvc projects this is a spring mvc hibernate xml configuration project so as we know that we configure dispatcher servlet in web.xml so let's quickly see the dispatcher servlet configuration yeah here it is so look at here we, we configure dispatcher servlet in deployment descriptor that is web.xml like this and all the http requests first come to the dispatcher servlet and dispatcher servlet will basically internally ask for handler mapping to uh, you know to identify which controller is responsible to process the request okay and in java based configuration we can extend uh, spring mvc provided classes to configure dispatcher servlet so spring mvc basically provides two options whether we can configure dispatcher servlet in web.xml or we can extend uh, in build spring mvc classes to register dispatcher servlet all right now you can see a uh, views so gsp pages or timelip templates will locate under web app folder we usually keep a gsp pages under a web app folder to secure our gsp pages 
okay so client is not able to access the pages which are located under web and a folder directly okay so once dispatcher servlet gets the controller details from handler mapping then dispatcher servlet will send a request to the controller so let's quickly go to the controller section yeah here it is so we have a customer controller let us say if request comes with the url list okay a localhost 8080 project name then slash list then this handler method will get called and this handler method is basically responsible to load a list of customer from the database and it will add customers to the model and it send a view as well as model uh, back to the dispatcher servlet okay so look at here so controller is basically responsible to uh, return a model and view to the dispatcher servlet so once dispatcher servlet will get a model and view details from the controller then dispatcher servlet will uh, you know uh, ask for view resolver to get actual location of view so look at here this is an internal resource view resolver so this resource view resolver is responsible for identifying the location of views for example here we basically configure sub prefix and suffix for views so all the JSP pages are located under this location and the suffix for JSP pages are .jsp so with the help of this configuration view resolver will identify the location of pages JSP pages and then then view resolver will send these details back to the dispatcher servlet and dispatcher servlet will consult a view engine to bind a view and model together and it will produce an plain html and that html response again sent back to the dispatcher servlet and dispatcher servlet finally sends that html response to the browser for rendering so this is a typical flow happens in spring muc applications all right guys i hope you understood the spring muc architecture and how the http request is being processed in typical spring muc application all right thanks for watching subscribe to my youtube channel whenever i will publish such videos you will get notified thanks for watching i will see you in the next video